When the new girl took maternity leave, we all said, get Sue back. Oh, whatever happened to my old typewriter? We got rid of it years ago. Coffee? Yes, thanks. 25 years ago, this advert was shown to advertise the brand new Windows 3.1. Now, ever since I was young, I've always been familiar with how a computer will look and work despite its age, thanks to that familiar Windows UI. But where did this come from, this ease of use we're all familiar with today? Well, we're going to find out as we delve back into the recesses of ancient Windows for the 25th anniversary of Windows 3.1. So, you've used Microsoft. For as long as I've been using computers. <laughs> Microsoft, making it easier. Now, Windows 3.1 was originally released back in April of 1992. Based on DOS, it was more of a GUI than a real operator system. However, it boasted improved system stability, expanded support for multimedia, true type fonts, and workgroup networking. Really amazing stuff for the time. Of course, being based on DOS, you may have noticed I had to enter the slash win command to start up Windows, something many 90s users will already be familiar with. Of course, opening the main set of programs revealed the file manager, very reminiscent of the later My Computer tab that all Windows users will be familiar with. I was able to create myself a user profile, and then close the browser down, something I was quite proud of as someone that's never used this type of operating system. Control panel remained the same as later versions of Windows, giving us a lot of key components and settings convenient in one place. Windows 3.1 supporting a variety of customization options, we got to change the default color scheme from something a little bit bland to a little bit more snazzy and modern. The rich blues of the LCD default settings, showing off just what Windows 3.1 was capable of. Sporting a range of international options, it allowed us to configure our place of origin, keyboard layout and measurement settings, all from a convenient window. Who'd have thought technology like this would be around in 1992? Opening up the accessories panel revealed the paintbrush tool, something that would later make its way into the program we all know today as paint. Although not containing as many features as modern day paint, we were able to create ourselves a little memo to you guys via the nifty use of a pen tool and the text tool. Common items today, but back in 1992, this was some great stuff to be bundling with a commercial operating system. The save as function was just where I thought it would be and worked just as intended, but for some reason it wouldn't let me save my new masterpiece. No matter what I tried, a shame but still not bad so far. Although having a built-in media player, I didn't have my PC configured in a way that allowed me to play back any media. However, the calculator that many of us will have used in our PC for years, in this case worked fine and contained all the features you'd expect from a calculator. Needless to say, Windows 3.1 has it all for your drawing and calculating needs. However, as around this point of exploring Windows 3.1, I became a little bit stuck, misclicking the Microsoft QBasic icon, resulting in me becoming stuck in a DOS interface that took a numerous amount of minutes to figure my way out of. I've sped up footage to make it seem like a lot less, though. Once getting back to Windows, we tested the built-in write functionality, where I was fully able to make a working document. I, however, found out that Control plus A was not a function this, that worked this far back, instead only resulted in a weird square box icon being made. However, copying and pasting with Control c and Control v works completely fine as later Windows versions. Now, Windows 3.1 comes packed with games such as Solitaire and Minesweeper, which would once again become staple pieces of software for the later versions of Windows that would follow. But being based on DOS, I thought we'd give it a go in true fashion at playing some real games. Up first we have The Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall, a game which had a massive map spanning all of Tamriel. A massive map even by today's standards. With many aspects from randomly generated dungeons to property management, it's clear this was a real time sink upon its initial release. The game also had one of the best MIDI test programs I've ever heard. Just give this a listen.
Once configured, the game greets us with a couch creation screen. Upon completing this, we're ready to enter the game's world. Although suffering clunky combat and less than stellar graphics, the game was great in my short amount of playtime I had, and these two aspects were completely void when I saw just how immersive this game could become. Following this up is Doom, which ran flawlessly in the DOS environment. It's one of the most iconic shooters to date, although I accidentally chose mouse support in the beginning, however this didn't cause any issues for the game actually running. You'd be free to play many of ID's early shooters on this DOS environment, and it's completely compatible with the Windows 3.1 operating system. An iconic game from the Windows 3.1 Entertainment Pack, the game ran fine, and I guess you could whittle away a few hours playing Ski Free, as many people did back in the days when Windows 3.1 was the common operating system. Of course, if you're more interested in strategy, we have the original Civilization game. Released in 1991, the game was ported to DOS among many other systems, and it holds up reasonably well today. Although lacking some of the newer features from many modern variants of the game, it does not detract from the charm or enjoyability, with micromanagement that fits the genre perfectly, and really nice pixel art that was just amazing for the time. You could easily sink far too many hours into this. Finally, a game that needs no introduction, the amazing and nostalgic SimCity 2000 running fine in our DOS environment. And to close this video, I'm going to leave you some of the best MIDI music you'll ever hear, and some great scenarios. Thank you very much for watching, good night!